All right, guys, welcome back to Growth Minds. We are here with the WWE superstar, Mandy Rose. Thank you so much for coming on. Of course. Thanks for having me. Um, so I heard that you've been a big dancer when you were young, when you were young. Yes. Hip hop, right? Hip hop and Hip-hop ballet. Hip hop was my and- favorite, yeah. Ballet, I wasn't too crazy about. I mean, I kind of just did it for like fundamentals and like, yeah. Um, but yeah, ballet, modern, jazz, and hip hop. Dan, what, how old are you when you were doing it? So I started dance very young. I started ballet actually, like probably like five years old. Um, you know, wow. just my mom putting me in dance, keep me active. And um, I grew up with three older brothers. So it was mm. also like, you know, their first girl. And they were like, she's going to go dance, you know, because I'm always like playing outside with the boys. Yeah. But um, and then I, I kind of continued to do it, but I stopped for a little bit. I got really busy with sports and then I got um, more involved in dance again in high school when I was a part of the Yorktown Dance Company, which was more like hip hop. Right, right. Yeah. I actually used to break dance Get when out. I was about 13 for wow. about a year or two. Yeah. yeah. That I can't do. So you might have to teach me some it's break a, It's a different <laughs> skill, yeah. But part of it's me hard. wishes I did hip hop because, I mean, like, how long can you break dance for? Like, I can't break dance yeah. now. And you need good cardio. For you need good dance. cardio, yeah. you need flexibility. Whereas sure. hip hop, you can just break that down at a club, you know, true. you can just break that down. Yeah, that's true. But you could just break down the, the break dancing too. I mean, a couple, couple of vodka shots, <laughs> yeah, right. a couple of tequila shots will, will need me for sure. Um, so this is, the, you, you've had a, a fascinating childhood. I've heard that uh, your nickname was Hamburger. I knew that was going to be the next one. Oh, uh, it has reason, to be. I could just feel it. Yeah. Which is it's just ironic because you were so into fitness and... Yeah. And the hammock is obviously so it's, it's a little bit contrasting, you know. For sure, yeah. I mean, and we still—it's it, just—it's a, a great story, obviously now, because it's like, you know, my nickname was Hamburgers, and people look at me and they're like, "How is your nip- nickname Hamburger?" Yeah, yeah. But you know, growing up, I loved—I still do. I loved loved food, um, and my brothers thought it was funny one day that I was loving the McDonald's hamburger that I was eating at the moment, and I wanted another one, but it was like the way I said it, and like, it just stood with my, I guess was stuck with my brother since then because they asked me um how many hamburgers are you gonna eat and i was like little and i was like 100 and i said it like <laughs> that too so they were just like oh my god so my nickname was hamburgers ever since ever since then yep and wow. now they feel terrible because i do tell this story like everywhere and they, <laughs> they're like oh my god like you're gonna make us look like bullies and stuff i'm like yes no it's a good story you know because i mean it didn't stop me from like you know training and and i i of course i didn't battle like i didn't grow up with like you know uh, I wasn't like obese or anything, but yeah. like I did have some, you know, body issues and body struggles growing up because I finally developed like fitness and it made me like, you know, really love my curves and really embrace my curves way more. So it, yeah. it, there is a story with it, you know, what was the struggle behind that though? It was more like, I guess my body type growing up too, because I, I did do a little gymnastics. I was always a little bit thicker mm. and, um, and I'm a little bit shorter too. So I felt like I, I don't know, for some reason, I just, uh, like, my legs were always bigger, and I just, for some reason, never really liked my legs that much. Like, that was, mm. like, the least favorite part of my body growing up. But until I started, like, dancing and getting into fitness and really, like, turning all that into, like, a lot of muscle, yeah. I realized that I was like, oh, no, like, th- my legs are my favorite part of my body now, and, like, wow. I, I love it. So um, it was just finding that balance. And, of course, you know, everyone goes through it growing up when you... You know, the different you have in- all bodies. these insecurities, yeah, of right? Course. So developing that and like finally like really, you know, loving the way I look and embracing it was like and then I just wanted to keep, you know, progressing and getting getting better and and more involved in fitness. What, what was the shift for you? Because for me growing up, because I, I was born in Korea, mm-hmm. so I would have freckles, which is very rare for like an Asian to have freckles growing up. Really? And in Korea, yeah. it's 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 just like a societal uh beauty standard it's it's not like a big thing okay so for me i was very insecure about that when i was growing up but then i moved to canada which is where i grew up and people love freckles like it's a huge thing here in the western society so i I started to embrace it for sure because of the fact that i just moved to a different country um what was that shift for you like how when did you start to start to love yourself and how you how you um i guess grew into it yeah it was probably, so I started training um, with, 
a coach, then that's when I kind of, after college, I went on to do um, fitness competitions. And yeah. I always, like like I said, I always trained and was always active and athletic, but um, it was when I started really doing like bodybuilding and, and dieting and watching what I ate and kind of just being like on a consistent regimen. And um, it was probably, the first time was probably when I stepped on stage for the first time um, in Boston mm. uh, with WBFF. I was doing a show and like I said, I just didn't really know much about it, but I kind of like, you know, I was, and I was very like lean. I, I, I prefer myself a little bit, um, less as lean than I was then because it was yeah. for a show, but I just probably, that was the moment when I like looked back at videos and pictures and I was like, wow, like I look great. And I worked so hard to get to where I was there. Yeah. But the biggest part of that was like the, um, the aftermath of it was like maintaining it and like also you know maybe being on stage looking that lean wasn't as sustainable to mm. an everyday lifestyle especially now with what I do but it was more about like finding that balance and being like oh no like yeah I love abs of course but like yeah, I love food too so I'm like yeah. I have to balance it out and now yeah. I, I've found you know I found that balance and it takes a lot of time but it's like you know really um finding it and and trying to maintain it yeah, I mean, obviously, there's a lot of, especially teenage girls that are very yes. insecure just based on what standards they have to live mm -hmm. up to. I think it's partly changed because, you know, growing up, there was like only a few channels that define how a guy should look mm -hmm. or how, you know, guys like Harry Chess was like a big thing in the yeah. 70s, right? <laughs> Whereas now we have like YouTube, Instagram, we have all these different things. So these like curves are, are making a huge comeback now, right? Right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you never know what's going to be on trend. Exactly. But and it's always, like it is, it's very true. And we're so impressionable, especially at a young age yeah. and what we see, you know, in magazines and whatnot. And I feel like that's why I do love to, you know, speak and, and, um, and talk in front of like young girls and guys, because it's like, you know, there's no image. Like there's so yeah. many different, you know, sizes and, and, you know, different backgrounds and, and diversities and stuff. It's like, there's no image to uphold. Like, you know, you're, you're the most comfortable in your own skin, obviously. It doesn't yes. matter of, you know, what you look like. So definitely finding definitely. that was a big revelation. I feel like for me, <laughs> was there a particular like girl or, or woman that you looked up to that, you know, growing up that you're like, Oh, she's like someone that I want to be. Yeah, I mean, I probably honestly like I always loved like Beyonce to be honest because she was always like just seeing her perform too. Yes, she's just a boss. But like, I loved like her body because she did mm. always like have those thick legs and like she just rocked it and like just she owns up to she it. Owns like, she owns it. Yeah, rocks and she it. looks amazing. Honestly, oh, yeah. but like, like that's like a you know I was like that's that's a woman. I'm like, damn, she looks good. <laughs> damn, I mean, you and 100 million other people, I'm sure. Yeah, so, I know, I mean, right? It's, it's amazing. <laughs> um, but. What I also found interesting was, you know, fitness and health is now this this new trend for you. But you actually studied uh, speech language speech pathology. Yep. Speech language pathology. Yep. So how did you get into that? What how's that been a fascination for you? So I always wanted to work with children growing up. I knew I always wanted to be a teacher. Like that was my you know I'd be in my room when I was little, and my mom and dad used to like kind of laugh because they'd hear me talking, and I'd like have my stuffed animals out, and I'd pretend I was teaching them. How old are you then? Oh, I don't even. I probably like You're like last 10. year. Yeah, I'm like oh, <laughs> last week. Me last Christmas. <laughs> I still do that. Do yeah. <laughs> um, but I don't know. I, I think it was also my escape too because I did yeah. grow up with three older brothers and mm. I. Um, it's hard when you're in a big family and like you are the youngest and you're surrounded by like, you know, three strict older brothers and a father and like you didn't really get much say at the dinner table or if you did, you know, sometimes it was like, Mandy, shut up. Like, you know, like, you know, mm. how brothers can be mean, whatever. Yeah. So I feel yeah. like it, maybe it was me going in my room and pretending like I owned the stage and like, you know, I was the teacher. I don't know. I always think about that. That's probably a part of it. Um, but yeah, so I would do that, and I knew I always wanted to be um, work with children. But then, my cousin was a speech language pathologist, and she told me to look into it. It's a bigger field. There's, mm. um, you know, you can work with adults, you can work in different settings, hospitals, home cares, um, home care. So, I got involved in that, and then I fell in love with that because it was actually like, it was really cool because I not only could work with children, um, but I could work with the adults, and it was so rewarding. Yeah, like helping someone. And that I had, I had a client with aphasia who had a stroke um, oh, wow. in at Iona when I 
did clinic and it was very rewarding because she was an older lady and I like kind of developed this relationship with her and I was learning you know I wasn't like a professional at it but I was learning and we developed a relationship but I was like very attached to her in the sense of like trying to help her you know recover her speech and her you know all different things so um yeah. it was really cool and I you know I went on to I wanted to go get my master's but I ended up just taking a different route and uh you know the rest is history but I always have that and you know in the back of my head you know I could always go back yeah. to it so do you think that that's what you would have done or do you still think about that? Do you still Sometimes, think about pursuing yeah. that career on the side or just helping people for... I think the helping people is like probably um, the, the... Like I think I even say like when I was competing, I was doing... I was bartending and waitressing and working mm. at my dad's deli as well and competing and training. And I was always, just always independent and just a go-getter and always loved to work and hustle. But I feel like every job that I had like taught me so much to where I am yeah. today to help me with things. Like I was a little shy growing up. So like working. In you the, were shy, you said? Yeah, a little really? bit, which is weird. I so my last, someone else said that. They were like, you were shy? Yeah. Just like, yeah, a little bit. I, maybe, maybe just like socially I would get like a little like nervous. And then when I started waitressing and bartending and um, and um, working at my dad's deli, just mm. socializing with people other than like my little circle that I had at home or wherever it was. Your stuffed animals. Or my stuffed animals. <laughs> when people talk that. back to you, yeah, like, why are you talking like, back to me? It's like, wow, people, they, they talk back. <laughs> yeah, they don't talk to you back. <laughs> maybe that was it. Maybe it's full circle. That, yeah, that the maybe that's it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I developed so many more, like, so much, you know, social skills, and I really, uh, like, it really taught me a lot. So I, I think, and then obviously the speech language pathology and um, being in clinic and, and, and feeling like I have a purpose, like I yeah. can help someone even when I was still learning, you know? Mm. So I feel like it all comes hand in hand because now today being in WWE, you know, a sports entertainer, we not only go out and perform in front of huge crowds, but we also, we also do a lot of community work, yeah. charity work, be a star rallies. We go and work with children, um, you know, there's so many things that we're involved with that it kind of comes like full circle for me. Which for is sure. Cool. Yeah. I mean, if, if anything, you can start a nonprofit yeah. in that in that field, exactly. helping people. Yeah. So you never know. Yeah. They actually, Iona College actually reached out to me recently about doing something like being a spokesperson for them and coming and speaking and oh, stuff, cool. which is cool. Yeah. Well, is that a big program? Is they have a big program for that? They do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So gotcha. That'd be something cool that I could look into. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I can't imagine, I have one older brother, but I'm not a guy. And also it's not, he's, you have, you have three, right? And you're, right. you're, you're obviously a younger sister. Yeah. So what was that like growing up? Were they just really, I imagine overprotective. So overprotective. Like yeah. people don't even know half the, the stories. Like, and I only tell like a little bit and it was just. Sure. The R-rated ones. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, they were just like, you know, they just, especially my one brother that were really close and were the closest in age, we're 18 months apart. He just like, we were best friends growing up. Like mm. literally like, you know, like attached at the hip, we do everything, yep. I, you know. So he was very just overprotective over me and any of his friends that, you know, came over as we got older, like they couldn't even look at me. It was like, don't even, don't Whoa. look at her. And I'm like, like, meanwhile, you know, we're close in age, you know, when you're in high school, especially too, like everyone's yeah. kind of friends with everyone. Like I'd show up to a party and my brother would be like, get out. Oh uh, no, he'd be at the yeah, same party? He, yes. That's the worst. Mm -hmm. And then um, he got a little bit better as, well, of course, as he, when he graduated from high school and I had one year left, so I was like, oh, this is great. But, <laughs> you know, it's like one of those things where they, they, you know, cared about me so much that they didn't, they knew how they were a guy themselves. They knew how, you know, crazy men were and stuff yeah. at the time and were so impressionable and in high school. And so they were just protecting me and For I get sure. it. But, um, I have one funny story about my brother that I'll tell you. It's, it's tell us now. Yeah. Um, so I'm in eighth grade in middle school and our middle school was next to our high school and he's a freshman in, in high school. And I had like a boyfriend and, you know, of course it was just like, I don't even know. We were in eighth grade. Yeah. We were talking on whatever. MSN. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> AOL. Whatever that was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we're walking out of the gym, which was like the kind of like the entrance was by the high school. Yeah. And we were like holding hands, walking out. And like I had a weird feeling because I saw like a group of guys come like running and it was like it was my brother, his like three friends. And they're all like running down the hill and we're going up to go to the bus. And he comes straight at us, and he just punches the guy right in the face. For, Garrett Burns. For no we reason? tell the story, yeah. For no reason. And I'm just like, oh, my God. And I just, like, I'm like, I'm so sorry. And I just, like, run, I think. And then later on, I was just, like, I was, like, crying to my mom. I'm like, I can't believe he did that. Blah, blah, blah. Him and all his friends are just all laughing. But the kid oh is really funny. God. And he, he didn't get hurt, you know, thankfully. But 
he um, was just like laughing about it. And like I tell this story and I think recently he reached out to me and he was dying because he heard like the story somewhere. And he's like, wow, I'll never forget that. He's like, <laughs> I got punched by Mandy Rose's brother. <laughs> Well, it's funny but now, I guess, looking back. I know, it's but you were saying he was laughing about it then also. He was, yeah, because it wasn't, like, bad. Thank God he wasn't, like, you know, down and out. Like, afterwards, yeah. he was just kind of, like, and what? he started laughing. And, we were, and I was just like, oh, okay, well, there goes uh, anyone that's ever going to want to date me then when my brother's around. Oh, no. Yeah, so it was pretty rough. So how did that but, impact, like, future relationships that you have? <laughs> like, you must have that um, in the back of your head. Yeah, then I started dating some of their friends to get back at them. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really kidding. No. Um, well... <laughs> Yeah, it they kind of um they were they got a lot better. As yeah. I got older and they were more like, Okay, Mandy's a grown woman and she's mature and she knows you know, she's not dumb, like she could handle herself, like they were they held they, you know, they got a little bit better about it. Do you think that partly attracted you to guys that your brothers couldn't beat up then? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> Did that you think that yeah. impacted a little no, bit? No, I mean a little bit. I mean I just I knew how my brothers were, so it was more just like, you know, I never really had any guys over, like, unless it was something serious, you know, my dad, my dad was really strict too, so it was like I had uh, three was, brothers also very and a dad, oh, yeah, so my mom was the one that, like, I'd go to for things when it comes, you know, when it came to anything personal in that sense, but, like, it was, yeah. it was rough, yeah, I mean, it's just weird how they n- now look at me, like, they see me on TV, you know, or competing, and, yeah. and now they're, they're so proud of me and so happy, you know, for me, they don't. They're now not. you can now you can protect yourself. Exactly. Yeah. Stage, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now I kick their ass. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, high school relationships are already tough alone, but dealing with that is crazy. It's crazy. So. Yeah. So then you you went to college. You studied speech language pathology, and then you started to get into fitness, mm-hmm. which is a big thing. You were already dancing, so that was part of your life. But how did you first really deep, uh, dive deep into it? It was just a friend that reached, um, I was waitressing with a friend, and she's like, you know, I could so see you doing this. Why don't you go and um, compete? And I was like, ah, oh, you know, I wasn't really sure about it, but I'm very, like, open-minded. And I was like, oh, let me give it a shot. I got some free time on my hands right now. Yeah. So I started training with a coach, and we kind of went through the process. And I didn't have any plans on doing the actual show, but it happened to be, like, a Boston show in June. Mm. And she's like, yeah, you could so do it. Like, why don't you do it? So I, I did it. It was a lot of fun, the whole process. But I didn't expect to come in first place. I didn't expect to, like see like get anything out of it either because I was just kind of going with the flow yeah and that's when I then started to like build my Instagram and you know do photo shoots and realize that I was like oh I kind of love this this is cool and I really started like it was like the one time in my life that I felt like you know besides trying to help others it was more like I felt like I was doing something for myself and like I felt like I was like wow this is maybe where I I I should be Hmm. you know like it was it was weird and then Um, then I went on to worlds in 2014 and I became the bikini world champion of 2014. So it was pretty cool with like, and there was no training involved before that. Like you you just jumped into it. I kind of just jumped into it. Yeah, I did. I switched coaches and I, um, you know, I trained like for a good, you know, four or five, I was already, I already had a base of course from the previous show, but I trained again and and I got like a little bit fuller because bikini, we weren't like as muscular and I was a little bit too lean for the last show. So I, um, yeah, I got like in the best shape of my life and, and went out there and struck my stuff and, and I won, which was cool. Yeah. And then I got, you know, a nice endorsement out of that, which kind of, you know, started my career in the sense of, you know, building my own brand. And I just kind of did a lot on my own. I just, I saw what other people were doing on Instagram. The big thing then when I was doing it was like a shout for shout with other girls to build yeah, our following. That was it was always thing. like yeah. shout for shout. So I did that a lot. Like I'd wake up in the morning and I remember like being on my phone and computer and like, and I'd really like try hard at it. And like, mm. I remember people like would, my brothers too, actually, some people would make fun of me like about the selfies I would take or like whatever it is. Yeah. But I'm like, no, don't worry. Like it's what, you know, don't worry. There's a purpose. And I would never go like overboard, but I kind of like got obsessed with it a little bit. Yeah. But you knew that it was a strategy it to get strategy. to where you, where exactly. you want to get to. And yes. now I look back at it like, no, look at me now, you know, like yeah. it's a huge business. And I was doing it for a reason, but I really didn't know that at the time at that much. I just knew that yeah. it was going to go somewhere. I mean, was Instagram, Instagram was kind of barely Yeah, it was like in that. It, it was, yeah. especially in like the fitness industry alone. Like I remember a few girls that still like um, stand out to me as like being like the almost like the front runners of like starting like their the fitness side of it like yeah. that I would like kind of like try to emulate and like follow and I was friends with and and um you know now of course I 
look back to, it's like now I have a whole nother demographic with WWE, which is cool. But, yes. you know, I like to try to keep that fitness um, demographic as well. Yeah. And did you know that building a social media following, you thought, did you know like what the next step was? Or you just thought, okay, this is, seems to be like what other people are doing. Yeah. So you had like, you just knew that one step ahead. I just kind of knew, yeah, I didn't know much like, you know, I knew that I, I knew that I could take it somewhere and I knew it would go somewhere. Like I had high hopes, but I also didn't yeah. really know where. And I'm kind of like a, I just kind of go with the flow too. Like if something comes at me and I, and I think it's a good, good opportunity. And if it's not, well, that's the only way I'm going to try. Like I was a big like risk taker. I was like, well, let's just yeah. try it out. You know, you never know. And that's what I did after I competed. Cause I was like, Oh, I want to take this even further. Like, mm. um, I wanted to just, I don't know, I wanted to take it bigger. And that's when I got recruited for the reality show Tough Enough. Yes. And that was like a big, like, oh, I don't know if this is where I want to go with, if I want to get into WWE, if this is the route I want to take. Right. But I said, let me try it. I did the Skype interview and they picked me for the show. Um, and yeah, so it was like, if I didn't do that, you know, I might not be here today. So It's crazy. I mean, there is a pattern with you, which is you're just very curious. Mm -hmm. You're open-minded. And I think a lot of people think about like being very strategic about like, oh, like what, what's the three next step that's going right. to happen after this. But yeah. you, you don't know what you don't know, you know, at the end of the day. True. And it seems like for you, it's just taking that next step. You're always open minded. And who, sure. knew, who knew you would be here? Yeah, exactly. Right, growing up. And I feel like now with more experience, I, I, I do try to like with certain things, I will try to take more strategic steps of like or or even planning like, you know, three months, six months, whatever it may be, because now yeah. I have a little bit more experience. Yeah, more options now. Exactly. You do have to more be strategic. options and it's like, you know, bigger things. But like at the time, yeah, it was like kind of just like, well, you never know. What, what do yeah. I have to lose? I'm young, you know. Wow. And were you still working at bars yeah. when you were doing these bikini challenges? Oh yeah, yeah, so and this, that was a really yes. hard um, challenge because I would be waitressing and working late at night bartending around <laughs> amazing, good Italian food all the time. Yeah. Working at my dad's deli sometimes during the day. Part-time, wow. Part-time, he had a, his an Italian deli. And so I was surrounded by food, the worst food you could have, cold cuts <laughs> and all that stuff, bread. <laughs> and then I would I would train, you know, when I can and whatnot. And I was, yeah, I was training for the shows while I was doing that because I needed, and you know, making, yeah. you know, I all that competing and all that, it, it adds up. You, your dress, your just a registration alone, you know, bikini, yeah. we wanted all bedazzled, everything. So I was paying for everything myself. So I had to- You had a coach also, right? Yeah, you had to pay for- Yeah, the coach, the trainer, oh travel to Vegas for the show, everything. You know, I was young and I, I did it all on my own with, with hustling and working and- Wow. So that was a, I look back cause I'm like, I don't know how I actually did stick to my diet while I was in a restaurant working till mid, cause usually I'd have to like stop eating by like eight Yeah. or if I did eat, it had to be like chicken and rice or whatever it was. And oh, I was no. surrounded by this, you know, food coming Amazing up, smelling food. it. Yeah. <laughs> that must be, I talk about mental yeah. fortitude. Discipline. My right? God. <laughs> I mean, you must have had something that you were striving for because and that's hard. Like you must have been dedicated, yeah. but to, to have that level of dedication while you were doing these bikini competitions, there must have been something that you were trying to aim for at least, right? Before the tough, uh, tough enough, you said? Yes. So what yeah. was the thing that you were trying to shoot for that allowed you to have that level of discipline? I guess it was more like, I, I was very focused on like building a brand. I didn't really know what the brand was though. Like I was yeah. like, I guess because I was looking on, you know, social media a lot and I could, I see like, um, like for instance, Bella Falcone was with working with USN. I don't know if you know her. She's um, from Brazil, but she was working with USN with me at the time. And she was mm. already at like, you know, a million followers or whatever it was. And I, I looked up to her in the sense of like, wow, like she has this really cool brand already and like she's and she, and I just got signed with USN same company so I yeah. felt like you know I kind of like she inspired me to get to that you know where she was and um and I didn't really know where it was going to go though to be honest yeah like, it when was I think a little back, scary for you yeah, at that time a little bit I just scary and exciting. I think back I'm just I, I I knew I could like I knew I had a talent in me somewhere but I didn't like know what it was and mm. I knew like like I, I I wouldn't tell you that I knew that I would be in WWE because I yeah. didn't, you know, I didn't know that I'd be, I'd be here. But, um, it was like a moment of like a weird moment when I was on stage that like, and uh, my friend, a couple other people said it too. They were like, this is, you're going to go somewhere with this, but mm. I don't know. 
Was it just like your presence and the, yeah. the confidence that you confidence, had in front of people? I think it was. It was yeah. more about a confidence thing because I, like I said, I didn't know much about it. I didn't really know what I was doing. But that was one of the things like the CEO of WBFF would say when he first saw me. He's like, you have a presence, you know, to be on stage. and You have a certain presence that yeah. like kind of. Vince, uh, WWF you said? I'm um, sorry, WBFF. Oh, okay, uh, Paul okay. Paul Dillette was the one for that that said it. That was with competing. Gotcha. The CEO of WBFF, yeah. Gotcha. So. Yeah, the unique thing about being in WWE is not just the physical presence, but the verbal presence as well. You yes. have to be an amazing communicator in a specific way too, mm -hmm. right? To entertain yep. in Promo. this like, yeah, exactly, mm -hmm. in a promotional way. Is that something you've had to grow into and, and train yourself to do? Because you had the physical it's training, yeah. of course, but the, the verbal side is, is a unique thing. Yeah, to you. and that's a huge part of it. You know, if yeah. you, you can't just be a good wrestler in the ring. You got to, right. I mean, and, and some people are better at, all, uh, you know, some people are better at res wrestling in the ring as opposed to being on the mic. But I think, you know, the, the best um, characters are like, you know, you can sit there and talk on a mic and, and really, you know, make the people feel a certain way. And that's all, yes. you know, that's what we do. But yeah, you do a lot. We did a lot of practicing and promo class and stuff like that in the developmental NXT. I was in NXT for like two years. Um, it's a lot of it's like confidence too. It's like, you know, sometimes it's like, I don't even know what I'm saying or if this is making sense, but if it's like, you just deliver it in a way that you just own like, it. Exactly. Like yeah. and that was the thing that I, I knew I had in, from the get go. And then it was really just like owning my craft of like, okay, now let's like actually make sense. And let's like, let's, you know, put it all together as yeah. far as like you, what your character is and what your character would say and do and doing it in front of a crowd obviously is a lot different than just doing it, you know, in your room in front of your stuff yeah. animals or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also the way you talk. Maybe that helped me though. Maybe it did. Maybe <laughs> the way, I mean, the stuff down is you're, you're kind of talking to, to children, whereas it's a different, different tone a little For bit. For sure. Right? Yeah. 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 Um, and they're not reacting, you know, I wasn't getting yeah, caught or no booed. One's, no one's so booing I mean, you, no one's screaming <laughs> out. Back then. <laughs> Man, well, we'll definitely get into that, but I, I want to know how you transition from being in these bikini competitions to tough enough and then finally getting into the WWE. Mm -hmm. What was that transition like? And I want to know a little bit about how you or the organization started to develop your character, Mandy Rose. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is your WWE name? Is that is that yeah. something you want to use after WWE? Is that something they own, um, like Mandy The Rose Rock or something? Is Mandy Rose, they own. Yeah, yes. but my real name's Amanda Rose Sakamano. So yes, not far off. Not far but off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I, everyone calls me Mandy. So gotcha, yeah. gotcha. So when they when they first, I guess, got you into the organization, did they already have a character? in mind that they wanted to formulate with you or did you so have an idea yeah, everyone's different of course when they um get hired or signed and uh, where they come from whatever it is so like my situation i was on the reality show tough enough so yeah the way it worked out was just i don't know how it worked out but i ended up being the big bitch on the show i was the bad girl i you know it just worked out like that and um, yeah why do you think that was well, I guess maybe it's reality, of course. So, like, you know, there's drama and there's fights and everything. And part of it's stage and part of it's not and whatever it is. But um, the – I don't know. It was weird. Right off the bat, for some reason, the fans, like, they wanted to hate me already. And I didn't hmm. even do much. Like, maybe it's just because of my presence, the way I look. And they just maybe thought that I wasn't cut out for this is what I assume is what it probably was. Hmm. Because of the way, I, you know, I was – like almost like you know the bikini bombshell and that like oh she'd probably like very can't stereotypical wrestle. blonde exactly. look yes yes but of course I, I you know I've proven that I can and I can work and whatever it doesn't matter but yeah from that from the show it started there like my character developed there and all of a sudden it kind of like we just played it played up played it up and we just kept playing it up and I you know from certain people they were like no they were like I know just just go with this mm. and I just started going and I people saw a side of me that like a lot of people had never even seen like my dad kind of hated it because people would come in and they were like oh my god your daughter like what how, why is she such a you know on tv and my dad's like oh no i know i don't like because i was like i was mean yeah but i was playing a role and at the time i was kind of like i don't know this isn't I, it's tv for me even though it's reality tv and like mm. it's supposed to be real but i mean we all know reality tv ain't that real <laughs> well this is something you openly talk about which is when it's just um, this this fear of feeling, or like at least being perceived, misperceived, I guess, yes. of um, this more like stereotypical character where mm -hmm. people may underestimate 
your actual ability. Yeah. Right. Because it, it must and have happened. Did. Yeah. And you, even like growing up, you mentioned that a lot of people, even like especially guys, I imagine they were not just because your older brothers yeah, that yeah. would be <laughs> randomly punch them. Uh, <laughs> but you felt that they were intimidated in many ways to yes. even approach you. Yes. This is what a lot of people actually don't understand is like sometimes a lot of the, the most beautiful girls, they don't get approached a lot. Yeah. Whereas a lot of guys think that they're always being approached. So they don't want to make sure. the effort. But uh, well, I'm sure you get approached a lot, but no, I'm, I know, I'm sure I the intimidation factor that that's Definitely. a huge thing. So and it's, that's late, actually, yeah. it's funny you say that because that was a big thing in high school, which I I'm also one of those people where I'm not like. Now, I'm not gonna say I'm not friendly, but I'm also like I don't walk around with like a huge smile on my face all the time. Sometimes, so sometimes it comes yeah. off as a little bit like she's like unapproachable, which I'm really not. I'm very nice when you talk to me and all, but I yes. just I'm not your average like oh my god, how you doing? Like I'm, I don't know, just not in me. Do you have the resting <laughs> resting bitch face. face. Yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. We swear all um, the time. Yes, I do, and I had that in high school. And people mm. used to tell me walking down the hall, actually older girls that were friends with my brother used to say that like. Yeah, you always kind of like had that look to you and like was kind of like didn't a little afraid, didn't want to talk to you. And now yeah. I look back at it and I'm like, oh my God, like I could see that totally. Right. But I think it's just part of who I am. And, and I get that now today. Like I get that, you know, in everyday life, like when people, I, I'm sometimes misperceived. Like they, right. they have this, and of course, you know, you know, not to blow smoke up, you know, I'm not, I'm not being cocky or anything, but like, you know, the way I look and all, sometimes it's intimidating to, to approach, to be, you know, to come up to it, to come up to me. But I'm yes. like, I'm very sweet when you start to talk to me, of course, but I'm right. just not like a kiss ass, I should say. Yeah. Sorry, well, people see you in the WWE <laughs> as well. So yeah. they do see that side and they may not know who yeah. you are in person. So when you do see a fan who's obviously a fan and they come to approach you, mm-hmm. How do you deal with that? Do you, are you still in character? Do they tell you to be in character? Or? I mean, it all depends. Everyone's different. Some yeah. people like to stay and kind of, you know, I, I don't personally. I like to sign autographs and take pictures just because, you know, these, these fans, uh, they're diehard fans and yeah. they're, they're supporting us, you know. We wouldn't be here without them. So I, I think of it like that. And, um, and it all depends, of course. Like, I mean, our fans come everywhere. Airports, I mean, they find us Damn. everywhere. So Did you see them today in the morning? Uh, today, I didn't actually. Okay, good. LAX, I don't usually see them that much. It, it's usually at shows when they know where we're going right. to be. So, you know, they'll come find us. And sometimes it is like you're trying to get your flight and you're rushing. And it's like, no, sorry. And, like, it could come off, like, being rude. Oh, yeah, for but sure. sometimes you just got to realize, you know, you got you to, gotta, you know, do what you got to do. It's, gotta say it's no. just not the right time. Yeah. But I, I do try to stop for my fans because, you know, they're they're supporting me. So it's right. like... But it is, um, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, imagine you have to adjust to it because it's, I mean, it's exhausting. Even even just like putting on extra energy when you're giving a talk, like oh, yeah. that in itself is already so exhausting. Mm-hmm. So have you, like, tr- how did you train yourself to play this character and then like completely be yourself in person? Or do you still stay in character well, sometimes because you're so used yeah. to it? Well, I honestly, like personally, I my character is like, like Mandy Rose is just like Amanda times a hundred, I think like there are mm. so many things. And, and I think, uh, and they say usually like those are the best characters when like, there's a lot of authenticity yeah. to the person and it comes off, you know, um, the most authentic and real because it's yeah. like, it's believable. You always, you know, you want your character be, to be believable. Yes. Um, and I think I'm the most confident when it's like, it's, it's true to my heart and I'm saying something that I truly believe in and it comes out like that. So for me, it's just like, you know, I'll just, be a little, you know, Amanda is just a little bit more relaxed. She's not yes. as like hyped up all the time or like as mean sometimes on TV than I, <laughs> I am. But it's, Are they disappointed that you're, that you're not that mean in person? Um, I'm like, damn. <laughs> nah, I don't know. No one really has. I think some people probably think I am. So they probably, yes. some people don't even approach me. And I'm like, good, I stay imagine. away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the same thing with comedy. The, the funniest lines or the funniest jokes are when there is this, um, side of truth like there yeah. is a bit of truth in it but you're exaggerating it or For you're putting sure. a different spin in it yeah so I think I think it makes sense that this character Mandy Rose is is still authentically yourself he's just yeah. on steroids in many exactly. sense yeah. yeah that's basically what it is um, and I know Sonia Deville is your your best friend yes. and she had a similar reaction when you guys first met which was like 
when the moment you started talking mm-hmm. was when she realized, oh, like she's gonna be, yeah, she's gonna be my she's best cool. friend. Yeah, yeah. And she always tells this story to everyone too because um, she says that you know when she she was a little like, oh, look at this one because I mean I was like I decked, I was decked out. I had like these big hoop earrings, these like oh you went all out. Yeah, it was, yeah, like, it was yeah. A tryout. I had to you know I had to <laughs> from New York and I had like the accent, whatever. Yes. And, and but she's from Jer- you know South Jersey, so like she kind of was like eyeing me like oh I don't know about this one. She always says, and when she said like what's up to me she's like hey how you doing and I just turned around I'm like oh good how are you like very like normal she was like oh shit like she thought I was I think she thought I was probably gonna be like valley girl if, if anything uh, but like, she oh didn't know yeah like very like kind of like uh, uh, yeah, yeah yeah exactly yeah. which I'm not but um and then the, we just hit it off and since from tough enough we like jumped into the same room because there was our beds were just like stacked like it yeah. was really kind of funny and we were like near each other and then we've just been best friends since right and you guys have really been there side by side growing growing each yeah, other's careers and, and we didn't plan presence yeah for oh you like, didn't well we've always we were training together of course in nxt we tagged together like yep. here and there we've um fought each other and then our debut monday night raw was together which we weren't like a established tag team so it yeah wasn't like we knew we were coming up like the way we got brought up was like just really ironic kind of in a way and right we've just been you know together since so yeah it's a blessing we are so happy we were together yeah i mean it's, you guys make a good match yeah yeah and uh, we have each other outside of it too like yeah the, you know driving to towns together alone grabbing donuts night, grabbing donuts eating yeah you know it's what we do best <laughs> <laughs> well a lot of people may know her uh as the first openly gay female wrestler in the mm-hmm. wwe there is some rumors that I've, as I was doing research, that you guys maybe or have been romantically involved. What's can we clear that up here while we're on air? Oh uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, no romance between us. No Best romance. friends only. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I if anything, we treat each like we're like sisters, so yeah. kind of be a little creepy, um, in that sense. But yeah, we're we're just best friends, and mm. we just. We're almost like the same person. It's weird. We're like twin energies. You guys like finish each other's sentences. Yeah, yeah, like really crazy. We always do that. Yeah. But yet we are so different too. Right. Like as you can see, we are very different. But we do just, you know, similar like morals and values and just the way we were raised and stuff. So it's um, it's crazy. But yeah, none of that. (laughs) I I, I saw in the interview though, you guys were at least least trying to pitch to the WWE producers that this could be a storyline though. Mm -hmm. To at least promote the LGBT community, yeah. is that something you guys are still pursuing? Yeah, I don't think we're ever gonna give up on that. I think there's always hope. Hopefully, yeah. Um, we just—it's one of those things we just never know, you know. We, yeah. It'd be really awesome to represent the LGBTQ community um, and you know showcase that, but I don't yeah. know if it's anything you know in the future that we can do. What, what do you think is the is like the barrier for the producers to to full on, to to go out on? Is that like for sponsors is that like just controversial what do you what do you yeah, think i think it's just everything really i mean it is something they've never done before too so you know could be controversial yeah. um yeah i don't really know the answer to be honest it's it's kind of like out of our control you know yeah yeah i mean we were just talking off air that i imagine the uh, there's like a fan base where there is more of a conservative audience that watch wwe so yeah maybe there is potentially some backlash or maybe people will understand yeah. it and i feel like yeah. just, there's backlash with like a lot of different things too nowadays i mean everything these everything, days yeah just so it's like what makes you know what makes that different you know and I yeah think it's, it's more about just making it like be the norm like you know it, it's not different why does it have to be different we're going to make it different and then it's going to be something but might as well just you know it's it's everyday life in today's society so right right, right. You know? but there's more controversial things that for that sure. exists that yeah. this really shouldn't be a big of a deal yeah so um so n- and the other thing is there's now cr- a lot of crossovers we have ronda rousey that just came in from the ufc mm-hmm. to the wwe w- what are your what was like your reaction to that when you first heard about that i mean it was really cool for wwe as a whole i think and for all the women you know put it kind of made all the women want to compete even more and maybe you know be more competitive in a sense but also like it's a cool you know crossover yeah to have someone so big like ronda rousey come to wwe and you know she was always a fan growing up too which is really cool right and um to have her you know 
come and kind of and actually it's it's funny because we actually helped train her in nxt oh no way yeah sonia and i we um helped train her when it was like more top secret when nobody knew she was coming and we didn't even know she was coming we thought maybe just for like a one-off or something you know oh, she didn't even event. mention it to you guys no because okay. it was very top secret and we mm. um they had like the things up the curtains up and stuff and sonia and i would help train her in nxt I took a couple hard punches from her, not going to lie. Oh, like, oh, damn. Oh, my God. Stay in the UFC. <laughs> oh, yeah, so I don't want to compete with yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. We joke around about it. I was like, <clears throat> we took a break real quick. <laughs> but no, she was really cool. And yeah. I mean, it's a huge cool woman's. able to do that, yeah. Huge woman's movement. Just in general. It's, it, it, it's, yeah. As long as she's able to really put that in the, in, in, in the eyes of people, I think it's sure. probably a good message for everyone. Definitely. Um, speaking of training, I was looking to get into... Uh, more about the mechanics of of how you train as a wrestler because it's I mean not only verbally but just physically mm-hmm. how you train your body on a day to day basis to be able to have that level of impact so you don't die when Ronda Rousey punches you. Right. What's that? What's that I like? Didn't die. No. Yeah. <laughs> no training. You can help that. Yeah. yeah. This is reincarnation at, <laughs> in live. Um, so it's a lot different, and obviously my training prior was bodybuilding training and like at that point I started training with a strength and conditioning coach which actually really helped me because it was different than just heavy lifting yeah it was a lot of mobility and um agility work and all that and it really helped my cardio which I felt like I was in the best shape when I first um started tough enough so Mm. it was like great timing for that but wrestling training is of course very different like of course you need your cardio your stamina which like I had which was great but it's like a different type of cardio it's like yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's very. It's hard to explain too, because it's like, I could like, like I that first um, challenge and tough enough. I beat. I smoked everyone, all the girls. There was one guy that beat me, and I smoked all the guys. And it was the oh, challenge whoa. was insane. And that's when I say my cardio was at its best. We what were was in it? Orlando, Florida, at the Citrus Bowl, and we had to drag body weight bags, our our um, weight bags down and up back the field, football field. Yeah. I don't know if I'm saying everything. I'm trying to remember everything. But that we had to do back back and forth. Then we had to do something else and then run up the whole sta- um, stairs at the yeah. stadium. So, like, we were literally dying. Like, when we, And when we got to the top, like, we dead. But for some, I don't know what, your adrenaline, I think, too, is another thing. Like, my for adrenaline sure. was just going and I just pushed through. But in the ring, it's different. It's like you can have a 20-minute match, and, like, you really have to, like, there's so many things you need to, like, focus on, too. Yep. And, like, facials and remembering everything. And, you know, you're getting hit for real sometimes. And, I mean, most of the time. And, yeah. and getting banged up and stuff. Like, there are so many different factors that, like, apply with it that it's, like, so different than, like, just, you know, running a marathon or something. Completely like, different. It's, yeah. It's crazy. So how, how did you train for, like, is there, because you have to probably train your flexibility mm-hmm. as well so that you can do yep. all these different, cor- you have to memorize the, the coordinations. Yep. You have to remember what to say after certain things. Yeah, you have a promo after your match. Forget about it. You're, you're blown up. You got to get behind that mic and remember what oh you had to say to remember. God. Those, yeah, those are the worst. Um, but yeah, it's just practice and um, routine. And like I said, like, the more confident you f- you are out there, like most of the time, to be honest, too, in my NXT, like a lot of my matches, like I don't even like to watch them because I'm like cringe with like things that I did because I didn't know much. Uh. But like I would do things and like, yeah, maybe I didn't know like the in-between stuff or how to um, like properly do the moves. But like I, j- I felt like I had a presence about me that like even if I made it look like I was able to do it and the confidence, yeah. it kind of came off like, oh, okay, maybe she belongs here. You know what I mean? Yeah, because people, even, especially the fans, they're not going to know exactly, exactly the details, right? As long right. as you're and presenting yourself. And they don't yourself. know when, you know, something isn't as planned or it doesn't, you know, something happens and there's yeah. things that always happen in matches. So it's like you got to be able to, like, on the fly, go with, you know, what you feel, your gut, mm. safely with your partner, you know, so, or your opponent, I should say. So, yeah. Is there a story where just something, maybe in the early days, where just like something went completely off guard oh gosh, and you're just so like, what the fuck? What do I do? So many stories. What's one that, you, that still sticks to you? Um, I'm trying to remember one specifically. Oh, so it was a, it was like a, I think it was a regular tag match and Sonia was in it. So we, we just brought it up recently actually, cause we had like a bad flashback of doing the same spot and we Uh-oh. didn't want to do it cause we messed it up in NXT. So it like yeah, forever yeah. Stood, was stuck with us. It was something where we pulled the, one of the opponents off the apron, but it had to be the same time as like the tag was supposed to happen. And mm. we missed it. 
and the but the whole rest of the match had to get switched because that was like a big part of the spot. Yeah. And we just all like froze. Like thank God, you know, NXT is all about learning and and you know it's developmental and now it's a huge brand and it's live on TV, so it's a lot bigger too now. But it's like, you know, thankfully it wasn't just like a show in Ocala or something, a small crowd and. We made it work, and you you learn so much from those situations. Sure. So like, I'm happy that they did happen because I wouldn't know what to do nowadays if I was on TV. But yeah. thankfully, it did happen, and now we can like readjust our brain into like, oh, let's you know get back to where. So mm. like, it for sure happens all the time, and it still does because things yeah. you know people forget things and whatnot. But and it's kind of scary in the moment. And then when I you imagine back and you get screamed at sometimes. And like, <laughs> what was that? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, and, and all, a lot of it is also like having the right partner, right? Like an improv yeah. or if you're doing stand-up comedy, there is this like level of trust that you get when you work with people enough. For sure. So is that why with, with Sonia, I guess, even if there was a screw up or you guys do forget certain things, I imagine you guys are so comfortable with each other. You yes. know, you know what each other is thinking. Almost, right? Yeah, we know what each other is like thinking. Yeah, telepathic For communication sure. level. Yeah, which helps, and that's the whole you know reason behind having good chemistry with someone or yes. good chemistry with your opponent in the ring is really important. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Well, it's a crazy schedule, I imagine, because of all the things that we just mentioned, yes. like from, from the verbal to the physical. Um, I saw the documentary that you guys did with your parents. Oh, gosh. And yeah. the, when, when you tear it up because of the fact of how crazy your schedule is, yeah. because you can't see your nephew and, and your niece. Mm -hmm. uh, like my brother just got married two months ago, and it was like my first time coming back to Vancouver in a year. Mm -hmm. And I saw my I saw my niece and she's talking for the first time. And you're like, where did the time go? Right? I'm like, I know. she was like a small. She didn't even have hair like yeah. a year ago, and now she's got hair. She's it's like crazy like, how fast, even crazy. faster they grow when you're not around them, of course. Yeah, and you're like, yeah, it's hard. You know, we're 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 always on the road. You're away from your family. You know, you miss a lot of things. It's um, it's a struggle, but you know, it's. It's also the career I chose and, yeah. you know, but it, it is hard, especially I come from a big family and all my brothers have kids and, you know, right. everyone's Italian, in Italian yep. family. Italian, mm. Big Italian family. So it is hard, but it's cool because they get to come to a lot of shows and I get to have them like, you know, meet people backstage and the kids like seeing their faces light up. It kind of is all worth it. And for stuff. sure. Yeah, for sure. I mean, having the right diet nutrition is, is probably a big thing for you to keep up your energy. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like a wrap up. I want to dig deep into what your diet looks like from mm -hmm. the morning to your breakfast to what you eat for dinner. Okay. I think it'll help a lot of people, obviously, to know how you actually maintain all this energy and this, this yeah, fitness level. Sure. Uh, walk us through that. Sure. Okay. So, um, you know, I'm all about consistency and balance. So, of course, my diet isn't as strict as it used to be when I was competing, but I yeah. physically and mentally can't do that anymore because I love food and I'm always on the road. And sometimes the only thing I can get at night, late at night, is like, you know, mcdonald's or something i do do that sometimes you do yeah, that's your cheat meal I, like, yeah yeah well it, sometimes we have no other option nothing's open late at oh, night I imagine. And we need to, so you know if you see my instagram and i'm eating mcdonald's and stuff don't come at me <laughs> okay? you're openly now. sharing yeah. it so yeah <laughs> so but basically um my diet consists like the morning i do um i do usually two over easy eggs on dave's over killer easy. bread bagels have you ever had dave's killer bread no i haven't is okay. that a new york thing no florida i think my yeah, California. Oh, is it? Okay. So the bagels are amazing because they taste like regular bagels, especially the everything bagels. So right. Dave's Killer Bread bagels, amazing. Um, and it feels like you're eating a regular bagel. So whatever. Okay. Two over easy eggs on, on a bagel for breakfast. I usually then work out. I usually have my protein shake after I work out. Consists of scoop away protein, a banana, usually almond butter, peanut butter, water, and ice. Mm -hmm. um, then my second meal is usually something, some sort of protein. I'm not super strict that much anymore. Like it's either turkey, chicken, tuna um, with some carbs. Like I used to be a little bit more strict, brown rice, you know. Yeah. Those type of carbs. But now I'm a little, like I'll have white rice here and there and I'll have um, maybe pasta here and there and stuff like What's that. What's the reason you know? for <laughs> like loosening up? It's just like, fuck it, this is life. Yeah, <laughs> that too. And also yeah. it's not like I'm, maybe I have such a base now and I've built such a base that I, and I train so much that it doesn't affect me negatively. So, mm. I mean, I, I'm not saying this is for everyone, but it's also like maybe partly genetic, but also, um, if like I'm maybe doing, maybe I'm kind of doing like a fit your macros too, if it fits your macros, but I'm yeah. not intentionally doing it because if it's ha I'm having smaller meals throughout the day. So, um, it just doesn't affect me right now that, you know, 
I'm, I'm loving the way my body is right now. Yeah. And it's, it's a little bit like thicker than it normally is, but it's more doable for my um, lifestyle and career right now and stuff. Yeah. So, and then I don't really, I used to do like four meals a day when I was competing. Now I'm like more at three. Mm. So, you know, I'm probably eating a little bit less, but eating a little bit worse cal you know, as far as like <laughs> that's like, your excuse right yeah, yeah. That's my excuse you're eating right one now. less meal yeah. a day i'm just trying to be honest you yeah know, i don't yeah. want to you know no false advertising yeah. here um but dinner i try to do kind of the same thing like a, a good protein um maybe some steak here and there and um you know a good good carb i try to sometimes cut my if i'm if i'm trying to lean out i'll try to cut my carbs out at night yeah and um you know and just kind of do the carbs in the morning and the afternoon um and then yeah that's kind of it really i mean like like I said, on the road, sometimes it's really hard, though. We just kind of get what we can get sometimes. and it. But then I'll, I'll be in the gym in the morning working out, sweating it out. And I feel yeah. like, you know, it hasn't hasn't affected me so yeah I'm, I'm i am wary of giving like very general fitness advice because of the fact that you work out like crazy yeah and your entire career is is, is built around being For active sure. so and it's been a long time like i've and been, it's been training a while. and building this muscle for a good you know 10 years now almost so it's like yeah you know i have a good base and like if i do go off here and there it doesn't affect me which everyone's yes. different everyone starts at different times you know and has different goals as well yes and genetics it, it seems like you got good I, yeah, genetics I mean, as well my dad has like his oblique still and he's like 61 so i'm Damn. like maybe i mean and he doesn't work he used to work out a little bit but yeah yeah and his diet's not good. people hate it when you talk like i have a similar thing i can eat like a whole cake oh, and yeah. like i would lose weight if i don't yeah you know that's like my brother actually people hate hearing that though right oh, such a first world no, problem that. That <laughs> yeah let's add a positive like, really note. that's what happens <laughs> <laughs> uh, so again thank you so much for making the time to come on we usually end the podcast by giving the listeners an actionable advice tip whether it's for their career, their, their, their confidence, their mindset, um, what's one piece of wisdom or, or tip that they can do after listening to this podcast? Um, I would say my biggest tip and like experience so far would be kind of just like taking risks because like my whole career and, and um, life till now is like I never knew I'd end up in WWE I never knew I'd you know become a bikini world champion I always thought maybe this is my path to go to school and graduate and get that degree yeah and, you know do the norm we should say um but and I did it and I you know and I don't re there's no regrets but you know you never know where you're going to end up so it's like if someone comes to you and thinks there's you know this might be a good opportunity for you and maybe you're a little iffy about it you know see Take 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 the risk. What's the worst thing that could happen? So that's like my yes. biggest advice, I would say. Gotcha. Any young girls talking to stuffed animals in their rooms? <laughs> you know what? Yeah. Dream you big. Never know you where can always be WWE big. superstar. You never know where you're gonna end up. That's yeah. it. All right. Thanks so much for listening, guys. Awesome. Oh, yes. Oh, you also have an app that's coming out, and yeah, you've got and a beauty line of products that are coming about, out. Yeah, so really talk to us a little bit about before we close out. Yeah. So um, and it's all full circle because of course my app Fit with Mandy app um that's been out. It's a 20, uh, sorry, 12 week at home program, um, yeah. skilled for all different, um, skill levels, males, females, different ages. It's basically, it requires little to no equipment. So you can do this anywhere. Yeah. You can, um, do this in your hotel room. And I designed this specifically for that because I am traveling all around the world and don't really get, you know, access to nice gyms all the time. So right. you can do this anywhere. Like we can do this right here, which maybe I'll show we're you. Gonna do, we're exactly. going to do a minute of it pretty so soon. So there's that. Yeah. And then um, also a skincare line that we'll be launching in February, which I'm really excited about. Um, it's basically been in the works for a while with my partner, Jazz Mather. And mm. um, it's another, some, another um, thing that's very... Uh, influential with me because it's like you know my my uh, health side of it training and staying active and all that but also the beauty side of it you know traveling around the world in different time zones and different um you know all these different flights and to have yeah. like a specific regimen is really important to me because i never really did and up until now um, yeah. finding these you know products that we've been working with and um developing this has really changed a lot so yeah really excited about that and um well, you do have great skin did you oh, ever did you. you have like problems with it growing up is that no, why I never had problems? I just um, ever since I started traveling, I noticed I started getting a little acne here and there, which I never really did. Right. So I was a little kind of confused, but it was more of like the different um, 
you know, climates and, and just in different and different airport every other day. And, you know, it's, it's gross and you feel, you feel so nasty when you get off a plane. Like, so it's, and wrestling, of course, you know, yeah. you're wrestling and <laughs> hanging, you know, touching other people's yes. skin all the time. It's just whatever. So the mat and all that. So it's, so yeah, it, it developed later on. And now, now that's why, like, I'm very strict with my regimen and my routine. Cause it's really important to me. Very cool. Very yeah. cool. Can't wait to see it come out. All right. Check out Amaro's guys and check out Mandy's fitness app. Thanks for listening. Awesome. Thanks for reminding me. Sometimes you get I was going to remind you too you, afterwards, you but just, I didn't Yeah, want to. you just forget. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When you get into it. Mm-hmm.